All right. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon to all our 12th Monarchs out there in uh, Monarch Nation coming off a hard-fought 52-38 loss uh, at East Carolina, a game that uh, was exciting from start to finish, a game we trailed 35-31 to 31, uh, entering the fourth quarter. Um, I felt like we were in a great position to win this game. Uh, I felt like our, our kids competed hard throughout the entire game. I was very, very proud of that. Uh, and also very proud of how uh, I felt like everybody was, was all in on this one from uh, everybody in this room, everybody at Old Dominion. A very special thanks to, uh, uh, to our president, John Broderick, our athletic director, Wood Seelig, Ellen Newfeld, Don Stansbury, everybody involved with the students. The fact that we had uh, 22 buses uh, roll down to Greenville. I, I heard somebody at East Carolina made a comment the most buses they'd ever had show up, I think, was 10. Uh, when they played North Carolina State. So the, the fact that we rolled in with 22 buses, uh, there were moments in that game where I almost felt like it was a home game. Uh, I understand we had roughly 5,000 people there, and you could, you could clearly hear the, the ODU chants uh, throughout the stadium. And that was very inspiring to myself, our players. We talked about it yesterday in our team meeting, uh, the fact that uh, so many people were involved. I already reached out to some folks on campus reached out to Alex Trevino, our band director, our, our dance and cheer squad. It was just, uh, it was a lot of fun to be part of that. Uh, I only wish we could have uh, brought everybody a win. So a special thanks to everybody, including uh, all our 12th Monarchs that just made an, an unbelievable effort. And if, if that's the way we're gonna travel in the future, boy, this is, uh, this is really gonna get entertaining. Uh, but thanks to everybody. Uh, in terms of the game, that uh, really came down to just uh, far too many mistakes on Old Dominion's part to beat uh, the best team uh, or preseason best team in, in Conference USA. I, I felt like there were a couple of really key turning points in this game. The first one, uh, the last play of the first half when we were leading 17-14, I really felt like we were going to go into the half uh, with the lead or, or at least force a field goal. And uh, Shane Carden, who, who's an outstanding player, uh, I think he's probably going to be one of the best quarterbacks um, in the country this year, scrambled out of the pocket. We were about to sack him, and we had a couple of our defensive backs came out of coverage. Uh, so we gave up that touchdown, put us down 21-17, and then the first drive of the second half, we had a uh, we missed a, a pickup on a blitz, uh, one of our offensive linemen um, on one of their base blitzes, and then Taylor tried to scramble, got the ball knocked away, and just like that, it was a 14-point swing. We were down 28-17, and uh, for the remainder of the game, we just really ended up chasing points. Uh, from that point on and you know when you lose by 14 and you, when you're playing a team like that there's a couple key plays and, and those two were were really big ones right there uh, we also in this game we had 21 players uh, play their first snap of college football um, that's a lot uh, and that, the only the only reference point I can make is going back to 2009 when everybody played their first snap of college football here but to have 21 players in that game we had 12 guys on defense play their first snaps of college football. We had seven on offense, and then we had uh, two of our specialists, uh, Jake Walsh, our punter, and then our backup punter, Joe Polisic, who was the holder, uh, who has a very important job holding for point after touchdowns and field goals. So 21 guys uh, played their first snaps, and, and that's certainly not an excuse uh, for the fact we lost the game. You know, East Carolina won. They were the better team. Uh, but I'm really excited with the fact that those 21 guys got experience. Now that experience should lead to improvement. If we do a good job as a coaching staff, uh, bringing them along from week one to week two, and our players do a good job of, of gaining from that uh, experience. Because there's such newness to that. When you play your first snap, you don't even know as a player what you're going to do. You don't know how you're going to react. You don't know what you're going to do out on the field. And uh, for the most part, those 21 guys who played had some good experiences in that game. So that should help us gain confidence as a football team. Uh, starting with, with special teams, I felt like our kicker was excellent. He had uh, six touchbacks in this game. They only had one opportunity uh, to bring the ball out. He was perfect on his extra points and his, and his one field goal. Uh, our new punter, Jake Walsh, was, was solid. Uh, we ran a couple rugby kicks with him. He averaged 43 yards. Um, he's going to get better from that experience. We, we had a couple minor things that were experience issues on special teams, but those are those are easy fixes. We'll get done, that done this week. Uh, defensively, as I mentioned, uh, 12 guys played their first snaps. We played 28 guys 
total on defense. That's a lot. Uh, that was by design. Coach Nagy and I went into this game with the plan that uh, no matter what happened during the course of the game, we were going to play a lot of guys. We were going to get a lot of experience on defense from this. And uh, the biggest thing that happened in this game, the biggest reason why we didn't have the success uh, we needed to is, is number one, uh, guys just didn't trust their keys on defense. You, you got to trust what you see. Um, and, and not everybody was in tune with our, our do your 111th um, philosophy on defense. We, we had guys that were so excited. They were so anxious. They wanted to make every play uh, that we were just out of position too much. So that we, we've got to get that fixed this week. We've got to get them to trust their keys and, and do their job. I, I had said going into this game that we were going to need to be a little bit of a bend but don't break operation because I had a, I had a feeling going in with uh, how good they were on offense and, and our lack of experience that they were going to have some success. And uh, we, we didn't accomplish that. We, we broke in the red zone. They were, they were six for six uh, scoring touchdowns in the red zone. We had the one opportunity where we caused a fumble. Uh, which was a critical play in the game, but they recovered the fumble for a touchdown. Um, so they, they, they were very successful up and down the field. And, and it really happened, guys, after that, that breakdown right before the half. I, I felt like at 14 points at, at the end of the first half, if we had been there, I, I would have been extremely excited. But that touchdown uh, took a lot out of us. It, it really brought our inexperience out in the second half. Uh, we were a different football team. We didn't play with the level of def um, discipline we needed to. One area I was very pleased with was our, was our run defense. Um, they, they had 22 rushing attempts in this game for a total of 34 yards. I thought our run fits uh, were excellent. When I say run fits, everybody has a gap responsibility in a defense, no matter what defense is called, whether it's a base defense or a blitz. And uh, we were very disciplined in that regard with our run fits. And that, that's a good start. We're going to need to be really good with our run fits. Uh, this week. Our, our pass defense was poor. Um, the good news is we can improve that. We do a little better job, which we will, uh, teaching rush lanes and responsibilities. There were about 15 times where, where we had it covered and Shane Carden got out of the pocket and made a play uh, when he got away from our rush lanes. And we, we'll fix that this week. And a couple things with coverage responsibilities, particularly at linebacker. Uh, you might have noticed they, they really hurt us from um, from about the line of scrimmage to 15 yards down the field. They never hit anything vertical on us. They never were able to push the ball down the field, but really over the middle of the field uh, in the areas where the linebackers needed to be or the safeties needed to be coming up. Um, and that's an area we can fix. I'd be really concerned if I was sitting here right now telling you that you know seven or eight times they just ran by us, uh, but that wasn't the case. So we'll get that address this week. Offensively, uh, I thought we had a very good performance. Um, it wasn't a great one because we had a turnover that led to a touchdown. You know, we gave them, we gave them points, but we, we played 19 guys in this game. We played seven players that had never uh, played a snap before. Um, I thought the quarterback was excellent. Other than the turnover, um, this was clearly one of his best games he played here because it was against um, probably the best team uh, that we've ever played. And the, the fact he was 38 for 51 for 338 yards, uh, three touchdowns, no interceptions. He rushed the ball 11 times for 52 yards and a touchdown. So he accounted for 390 yards uh, of offense uh, against a good football team on the road. And I was very, very impressed with the, his poise throughout the night. Our offensive line was, uh, was really good in this game. I mean, East Carolina threw every blitz you can imagine at us in this game. They came from every angle, whether it was linebackers, corners, safeties, uh, and, and the quarterback got our guys in the right protection, and then our guys blocked them. Uh, there were a number of times in this game where you had uh, uh, Daryl Johnson, number 56, who's a possibly a first or second round draft choice, and um, our tackles were really good against him. Both, both Jack Lowney, our left tackle, and, and DJ Morell, our right tackle, were really solid in this football game. And uh, I feel like we did a really good job uh, up front. Wide receivers, running backs were very good, whether it was route running, blocking. Uh, we had a couple just sensational catches. Jaquel Bailey's one-hand catch that gave us a lead uh, was really impressive. And uh, we were very good in the red zone. Uh, we only had one opportunity where we didn't score a touchdown. We were five for six in the red zone scoring touchdowns. Uh, we had to one sit uh, where, we, where we kicked a field goal 
uh, running the ball, we were efficient. We were 23 carries uh, for 90 yards, and that was the plan going into this game. We were going to throw the ball. We called 68 pass plays uh, in this game. You know, I know it says he threw it 51 times, but we called uh, 68 pass plays in the game. And, and usually what happens with Taylor, we don't call a run play for him. But when you look at the stats at the end of the game, he's usually got 10 or 11 carries. It's, it's the same every week going into it. He basically decides when he's going to run the ball and go. And, and he did an excellent job with that. But the goal going into this game was, uh, was to throw the ball. Uh, looking at this week's opponent at Maryland, they're 1-0 they're uh, on the season, coming off a 43-10 win against Florida International. Um, our big challenge this week, um, again, for our defense is going to be containing a very explosive offense. They've got two NFL caliber uh, wide receivers that are playing for them. They've got their quarterback, uh, Chris Brown, who missed all of last season with a torn ACL, who's back. Uh, he had an unbelievable first game. He was 20 for 23 for 281 yards and three touchdowns. So he only threw three incompletions, and then he had 11 carries for 105 yards and two more touchdowns. And almost all of this happened in the first half. You know, he accounted for five touchdowns in the first half. So that was quite a debut for him. They're very good at receiver and, and running back. I mentioned the two guys outside. Uh, their O-line tight ends are solid. Uh, defensively, they held Florida International to 171 yards total in this game, only, only 80 yards passing. Uh, they had a couple takeaways in this game. Very impressive. Um, on defense, and, and what really jumped out to me is they held Florida International to four for 17 uh, on third down. That's that's impressive. That's getting off the field, uh, and they did it in, in impressive fashion in the first half. I've watched all their special teams as well. They're they're solid. They're punter. They're kicker. You know, they're they're good operation all the way around. And and this is a team that I anticipated going into the season would be a good football team. They were picked to finish third. Um, in their division in the in the Atlantic side of the ACC. They're picked to finish third behind Florida State and Clemson. Um, and I can see why. This is, a, this is a solid football team. They gained a lot of experience last year. Um, so we're going to have to be good in all three phases just to have an opportunity uh, to win the game. We'll have to create some opportunities for, uh, for turnovers uh, to have success. And I'll take questions. Do you anticipate playing as many guys on defense again this week as last week? I do. I, I think right now, uh, Dave, we're going to have to we're going to have to do it by committee. At this point, we're going to have to get a lot of guys uh, in the game. You know, Maryland's going to be they're going to be up tempo. Um, similar, we think they're going to be similar to what we just saw from East Carolina. And if we're playing an up up tempo team. Um, then, then we're going to have to get a lot of football, uh, a lot of guys in the game um, against that style. How much of the, the number of players you want to see, you know, you want to get into the game has to do with tempo and how much of it is just wanting to get them on the field and gain some experience? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit of both. It's a little bit of both. We, we've got to continue to gain experience. As, as I mentioned, you know, 12 of those guys were brand new. You know that that got in that game the other night, and even the 16 that played, uh, it's not as if out of those 16 guys, there's a there was a dominant player on the field who had uh, who had played a lot of successful football for us. You know, John Dar is the one guy who's been the most consistent for us in terms of a starter. You know, he started every game last year. Um, everybody else has been, you know, in or out of the lineup. So. You know, we're, we're, we're only in week two, and, and we're trying to develop some depth. We're trying to develop some, uh, some unity there, and we're also trying to find out um, who our best players are going to be uh, on the defensive side of the ball. Any way to tell at what point you will kind of start to pair back and just and, and play, like you mm -hmm. said, to develop a little more unity and continuity? Mm -hmm. not, at, not at this point, because I want to see, I want to see some guys step forward. I want to see some guys gain experience. Um, my experience has taught me, Dave, that generally when you go from your first game to your second game, you see some tremendous growth from your football team. And um, what I witnessed yesterday from our from our guys, particularly our guys on defense, is they're they're very determined uh, to make a lot of improvement this week. Um, I could sense it from them in the meetings, from talking to certain guys. You know, I met with the captains this morning, and 
talking to Nate Barnes and Andre Simmons, you know, those guys are very focused on having a more productive week this week. Now, again, I say that we just went against a, you know, an FBS offense that, that did that to everybody last year. You know, it wasn't as if they played people last year, you know, maybe then teams like South Carolina or some top five teams in the nation defensively where they didn't do that. You know, they scored 65 points on Marshall last year. So, um, you know, I don't want our kids to lose confidence either. It's kind of a happy medium there. I tried to explain to them yesterday, you know, you went against a really good team. You know, you went against a guy, a quarterback that I think's probably going to play at the next level. He's a good football player. You know, Justin Hardy's as good as any wide out. Uh, we'll see this year. You know, that kid was a really good player. So we're trying to make sure, too, we, we maintain that level of confidence uh, that we should have coming out of this football game from being in a position to win in the fourth quarter. Bobby, were there uh, some newcomers who were some who plays, some guys who stood out, guys who maybe surprised you a little? Um, there wasn't anybody that, that surprised me because I, you know, I, I felt like they'd go out and compete. Um, you know, I want to make that point. Everybody who, who got in that game, regardless of whether they played or didn't play, uh, man, they competed. I mean, our kids were so into that game. They wanted to win that so badly. That was as distraught a locker room as I've been around after the game in there, you know, just feeling like they, um, you know, they could have won the game. You know, that was kind of the mindset in there. Um, but the guys who got in and, and played a lot of, uh, a lot of football, Harry, um, you know, we had, for example, Javon Neal, you know, Javon played played 59 snaps in that game. That's a lot of snaps to play at corner. Uh, and he performed well. You know, I was, I was pleased with the fact that, number one, at corner, you know, you can't, you can't let somebody get behind you. You know, that's the number one thing you got to do. You can't give up the big play. And he did a very good job with that. Um, I, I thought he showed well for, for his first college snaps. Uh, Rob Thompson. You know, true freshman who, you know, he graduated high school early in January to come in here. Uh, he played 18 snaps, um, and I thought he performed well for his first first time. Uh, Richie Staten played 26 snaps in this game. You know, we had to – Richie's one of those guys that he's – boy, is he good. I mean, he can flat out play. He had a, he had a hit one time on, uh, on the running back on Cooper that, that I could feel on the sideline. Uh, and every time he'd do that, he'd have a snap where his – you know, he wouldn't trust what he was seeing. You know, he wouldn't have his eyes in the right place, and he'd end up out of position. You know, his is just a, an inexperience factor. And, and we've got to get him back to just trust what you see. You know, do what you do in practice and then take it out on the game. And, uh, but it, there's so much potential there. There's so much room uh, for him to improve. Uh, I'm looking down the list of new guys that played here. Chris Smith, you know, started at, at nose. You know, started at nose guard for us. There's a transfer guy who came in, performed well. Played, played 41 snaps in this game, which is a lot. That's a lot of football to play um, at that defensive tackle position because you, you don't get any plays off in there. You know, it's, it's this, every snap when you're playing up front, whether it's O-line or D-line. And then Scott Wiggins, uh, another new guy, talking about here's another guy that, um, you know, a high school guy in essence coming out age-wise, played, played 32 snaps in this game and, and had some solid – Solid plays, so that those are just the guys, Harry. And there's there's a bunch more. Obviously, 12 guys played uh, on defense. The, the guys on offense that get in, Connor Mooborn, that was his first experience uh, playing in a college game. Now Connor's a, a redshirt freshman, so he's almost like a veteran, so to speak. You know, he's he's been here, he's been around us compared to these high school kids that just got here, or the junior college guys. And I thought Connor really played well in this game against a. They had a nose guard that's as good as anybody will see this year, who was a really good player. And, uh, you know, he had some times when he was just trying to hang in there, and he had some times where uh, he was really solid. So that he was really the only guy up front that got a lot of snaps, you know, because we had four returning starters uh, in the O-line. Uh, Melvin Vaughn, it, Melvin's, uh, he, he's got to get used to the speed of the game. You know, it was really fast for him out there, and, and he admitted that. He said, Coach, that was really fast. Um, he had an awesome tackle on, on kickoff. You know, he had a tackle where we made the play inside the 20-yard line, uh, and that was Melvin making that play. He's just going to get better from that experience. Zach Pascal, redshirt freshman, first time playing a wide receiver. Um, Zach was solid in that football game. Um, I thought Cam Boyd was solid. He had a couple blitz pickups where you know Cam's all of this big, 
you know, and there's 250 pound linebackers coming at him, and you know he cut him down one time. Had a really nice cut block that allowed Taylor to get a pass off. He had a couple really good runs. Um, we'll get him the ball more. You know, that was just his first experience getting out there. So I, uh, I feel like there was a lot of good experience gained, Harry, by a lot of those, a lot of the young guys uh, Saturday night. This question may <clears throat> be redundant you know, based on everything you said, but one of the things that you and a lot of your players had said before this game is. We want to prove that we belong in FBS. Mm -hmm. you know, was, did you prove that Saturday, or is that a season long? No, that's no, that's that's a very fair question because we had talked a lot about that. We had talked so much about trying to make a statement um, that that we could right away step in and compete at the FBS level, and I feel like we did. A lot of it, Harry, had to do with the the statement that I'd made from the start of in in all twelve games, be in a position to win in the fourth quarter. Um, the ultimate goal, obviously, was to beat East Carolina. Uh, we didn't do that, so we, we failed at that. Uh, but being in the game in the fourth quarter, making it where that was a, that was a football game all the way uh, down to the end of the football game, and, and we did that. So I feel like we made a statement um, that we can play at that level. I feel like we made a statement that uh, next year we're, we're going to compete for the Conference USA Championship. Uh, when we come into it, and, and a lot of that, my confidence area has to do with the fact that we're going to have 24 seniors next year. I mean, that class that, that Taylor Heineke's in, all those juniors that are, those guys are performing right now, uh, they're going to be seniors. And then we've got 21 new players that, that are going to be involved in 12 football games this year, going to gain incredible experience and, and going to play some really high level teams. Uh, going into it and then uh, it, right now our recruiting class I, I can't speak to specific guys but this is a for the second year in a row this is turning out right now to be a highly rated class in Conference USA so I feel like we're going to have another influx of really good football players coming in uh, and that was part of it would have make that statement that uh, we can play against Conference USA and uh, East Carolina deservedly so is his the top team in Conference USA this year or, or ranked right up there. Um, so I feel like we played the best team in the league and stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Do you need more from your running game? I mean, you talk about Taylor's sort of mm -hmm. improvised runs right. that add to the total, but just mm -hmm. in terms of the, the run game it, you know, itself, right. you need more from that. Yeah, that's that's going to come, Dave. This, this game plan by design was uh, when Coach Scott and I had talked Friday in kind of our final preparation meeting, you know, he made a statement to me. He goes, you know, I'm really thinking about throwing it every down in this game. And, you know, I said back to him, well, let's just, let's mix in enough run uh, to keep him off balance. Because we felt like in this one day, we felt like we, we needed to throw the ball and really push the tempo, um, which we did. You guys probably noticed we caught him at least a couple times with substitution infractions. We, we were trying not to allow them to sub. We were really trying to get 54 and 56 and 66. We were trying to just give them a run out of gas um, in this game to slow down that rush. And uh, we were able to do that. So the, the goal going into that game was to, was to throw the ball on a regular basis. And I really felt like we mixed in the run enough. Um, and that was by design, Dave. This game plan this week will be, uh, it'll be a little bit different against Maryland. It'll be a little bit different as we head down the road. But that was a specific plan going into East Carolina to uh, throw the ball um, on a regular basis. Anything else for Coach? Nothing from over in this side of the room. Did you have fun? Oh, my God, was that fun. That was as much fun as I've ever had in coaching in 26 years. What, what an unbelievable environment. Great place to be. How about you? Did you have any fun? It was a great time. Wasn't it? <laughs> Let's do that every week. <laughs> As a matter of fact, let's go do that in Maryland this week. <laughs> do we have any fun over here? No, it's just okay. How was the food upstairs in the press box? Was it just okay? C minus. C minus? Oh, we got to pick it up. Chad, we're going to have special deliver. Keep these guys happy. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, 12th Monarchs. Uh, we hope to see you in Maryland Saturday at 4. If not, the game will be broadcast on uh, ESPN News. So tune in for you monarchs. Have a great day, everybody.